Greetings, friends. I'm so glad you've joined us for this uh, message today. I really believe that the Lord is going to speak to us and encourage us. I started talking about a subject I entitled, Those With Us. And these messages that I'm sharing are based on 2 Kings chapter 6. It's the story about when uh, Elisha and his servant were surrounded by an, an army that was after them. And you know, it's amazing the reaction that we get from the servant, but also the reaction that we get from Elisha. So today I want us to read verse 15 and verse 16, and we'll be talking about do not fear. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Very interesting. Now I want you to imagine with me, being faced with an enemy that has surrounded you. You look around and you see no way out because you are surrounded. You consider your strength and you find yourself outnumbered and outarmed. All the indicators are saying captivity, destruction, death is imminent. It's awaiting you or about to happen. We can go on and just be able to say maybe poverty, hunger, humiliation, just all these negative things, bad things are just about to happen. And many times I think we feel like that or we get to a place where we've been cornered or put in a corner. And when we look around, we don't see a way out. When we consider our options, we find that our options have run out. And we are in this place, this position, where it just feels like it's just a matter of time. I am going down. It's a matter of time. Something bad is going to happen. Or maybe you're just in that place where you feel like you're already sinking. You've just lost your job. You look around and you don't see, you know, light at the end of the tunnel. You just see darkness in the tunnel. And it just seems like you are in a corner and you are asking this question, what shall I do or what shall we do? I'm here to give you an encouragement, an answer from the word of God that should lift your heart and just encourage you to be able to say, though it seems dark around me, though it seems like the enemy has encamped around me, yet you will find that there is help for you. What shall we do? Now let me begin to give you the answer. It's a very simple answer, but very profound and it will change your life today. And the answer is this, do not fear. Now, I'm going to pause there. The answer is not yet complete. If I stop there, you know, it will still pose a problem. You are seeing an enemy surrounding you. And here comes a guy like me telling you, don't fear. You know, it's almost, you know, you're going to say, but uh, Raymond, I think something is wrong with you. Can't you see the enemies? Can't you see the trouble? Can't you see, look, they, they have laid me off. Can't you see I am in trouble? These things are not the way they should be. And here you are, you have the boldness to tell me, do not fear. Now I want you to just stay with me because when we get to the end of the message, you will understand why I say to you, do not fear. Now, are the issues that you are facing real? Are the circumstances around you impacting you negatively? Are the indicators showing that if you continue in the path you are in, in the way things are going, you are going to get in trouble? Sure, I'm sure the indicators may be saying that, but the message still remains for you, my brother and my sister. Do not fear. Now remember, this is not yet a complete answer, but let's just look at fear itself because it's important to understand what we are dealing with. Now, fear is a response of belief 
and expectation. Fear is a response. It's a response of belief and expectation. You know, I read something from, you know, GodQuestions.org. And this is what they said, that the fear that the Bible tells us to avoid is concern mixed with anxiety and dread. It is the feeling of alarm we have when we expect trouble and danger. So you have this feeling where you are expecting trouble and danger. Now, Elisha said, obviously, as he sees those that army surround them, when he sees them, he's not just looking at them or they are just there posing. He knew that in a moment they may be attacking and we are going to be held captive or will be killed, will be destroyed. And this could be the end. So he is having this feeling that something bad is about to happen. Now, as I've just said that, you know, someone has just said, wow, that sounds like me because I have this feeling that something bad is about to happen. You know, fear is a distressing emotion aroused by impending danger, evil or pain. So you are looking, almost expecting that something bad is about to happen. That's how fear works in us. So you, you wake up in the morning and your expectation is something bad is about to happen. That's what fear is telling you right now. You've lost your job or you're about to lose your job or you're about to get sick and they shall, there will be no cure. Just, just this fear, this, this expectation that something bad is about to happen. Now I say that fear is a response of belief. So fear is believing what the enemy is saying is about to happen. Is believing that this enemy I see is stronger than I am and he is going to have his way in my life. And you are expecting that. Now, you know, we can go on and say it is to be worried that something undesirable will occur. You know, there are many people who live life like that. Where all your expectations are for bad. That if anything good happens, you are thinking, so the next thing should be a bad thing. You know, we are facing a, 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 a plague that is hitting the world. And you know, when you watch the news, it just feels negative. It just feels, when you look at people dying, and it just feels like, you know, a dark cloud is over us. And many times it almost feels like, you know, we can't even see light at the end of the tunnel. But the message is, when you are surrounded by an enemy, when it seems like there's this dark blanket over your life, when it seems like you don't know where you will get your next meal, when it seems like now, you know, the opportunity for work to make, uh, to earn an income is just dwindling and it seems like you know it we are going to be in a bad situation when it seems like that the message is do not fear now fear comes by seeing and hearing now the servant sees the enemy and this dread grips him and he's now developed this expectation that we are in trouble, something bad is about to happen. So it's based on seeing and hearing. I like what the Lord speaks to the Israelites after he destroys the armies of Pharaoh. He says that the Egyptians you see, you shall see no more. And my prayer is that the thing that is making you afraid you will see no more because God would have worked a miracle in your life that would turn your life around in Jesus' name. So it's fear comes by seeing and, 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 and hearing. It's then from what you hear and you see, you make a judgment. You make a conclusion. In this case, the servant concludes to say, this enemy has surrounded us. We have no way out. Now, what can we do? It's almost like a, 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 a question of resignation. So many times fear will make you see the enemy so big, so powerful, and it, it's almost like what the enemy is up to doing will succeed no matter what I do, no matter what somebody else does. 
But the message is do not fear. Remember, we still got to complete that sentence. Now, fear is going to paralyze you. Billy Graham says, fear can paralyze us and keep us from believing God and stepping out in faith. The devil loves a fearful Christian. Oh, I think this is well said. You know, when we allow fear to get hold of our lives, we are paralyzed. It's almost like you can't move forward, you can't go anywhere, you can't do what you want to do, what God is prompting you to do. You almost are sitting, waiting to die. But I think your heart must be stirred today. You should talk to yourself, say, why should I sit here until I die? I'm going to get up and do what God is telling me to do. I'm going to get up and do what I need to do. And as I take my step of faith, God is going to work in my life and open doors where there seems to be no doors. So fear will paralyze you. Fear will torment you. You know, sleeplessness, anxiety, stress, confusion, and the like will become your portion if you allow fear. You know why you can't sleep? Why you're always worried? You are anxious for nothing. You know, fear torments us. And I pray that after today's message that the fear that has tormented your life will cease today because you rise up boldly in faith knowing that God is with you. God is on your side. God is fighting your battles. The other thing you need to note about fear is that fear will rob you. You know, Jim Goodwin says, the impossible is often the untried. Is there a step the Lord is asking you to take that you have been afraid to take? You know, it seems impossible to you. Everyone else around you says it's impossible. But many of the things that have been great breakthroughs, great achievement, have just been things that someone believed. They took that step of faith despite the fear, despite the voices, doom voices that were speaking doom. They took that step. So fear is going to paralyze you. Fear is going to torment you. Fear is going to rob you. But God is saying, fear not. Don't allow fear to dictate what happens in your life. Don't allow fear to direct the steps of your life. Now remember the answer was incomplete. Let's try to complete the answer that is given. He says, do not fear. And there's a reason given. Do not fear for those who are with us are more than those who who are with them. That is a game changer. So the reason why I'm saying don't fear is not just saying that you stop fearing, but because there's a reason. And the reason is, if you looked carefully, with that army surrounding you, there is an other army, and these are chariots of fire in this instance. The Lord himself is leading this army and he is greater than the enemy that is standing against you. That should cause you to rejoice because the Lord is with you. To rejoice because, you see, what is about to happen is not what fear is saying. What is about to happen is what God is intending to do. And we know that he's up to something good. You see, the reason is, again, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Now, to grasp this reality, because you see the darkness, you see the negative, you see the problems, you see the issues that are against you. To be able to grasp the other reality, the reality of God's presence, that is only done by faith. Now, faith, obviously, does not work by the physical senses. It's by our spiritual senses. And the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Just like fear comes by what you hear and what you see, faith also comes by what you hear and what you see in terms of what the Lord is doing. Now faith is a response of belief and expectation. Just like fear is a response of belief and expectation. With fear, I am expecting that something undesirable is about to happen. With faith, I'm expecting that what God has said is about to happen. Hallelujah. What are you expecting? 
Are you expecting what fear is saying or are you expecting what God is saying? Whose report will you believe? Are you going to believe the report of your eyes when you see the giants and the issues that are the, the enemies coming against you? Or you are going to believe what God has said? I am calling you to believe in the Lord because the great God is with you. So no matter how big your enemy is, there is a bigger one, a greater one who is with you. Hallelujah. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. One of the ways to want to cure fear is to get into God's word. What is God saying to me? Now we are looking at a crisis in the world. We have to ask ourselves, what does the word of God say to us in a time of crisis? And you'll be so surprised that there are many promises. Just read Psalms 91. If you are a believer, that just gives you these great promises. You can sleep instead of being tormented. Instead of being anxious about tomorrow, you can sleep knowing that the one who feeds the sparrows is going to take care of you. God will supply your needs according to his riches in glory. God will come through for you. God will bless you beyond your very expectation. He's going to hear you and answer your prayers and change the circumstances of your life. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, the scripture says, God, he starts by saying, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. So we don't even need to allow fear to torment us because we've been given the spirit of love, the spirit of power, and of a sound mind. Every Christian should be in their right mind at this time. Every Christian should be flowing with love at this point because the spirit of God is upon us and that love is shed abroad in our hearts. We should be experiencing joy because the joy of the Lord is our strength. We should be sleeping, sleeping well, because God gives sleep to his beloved. There's no need to worry about tomorrow, no matter what has come against you, because God has seen it. Nothing that has happened in your life has surprised heaven. Heaven has an answer. And heaven says, cast it to me, bring it to me. Bring it to me. And then he's answering you. He's making a way where there's no way. He's a way maker, praise the Lord. Psalms 56 and verse 3. I'll end with this. Maybe one more statement. I like what the psalmist said, and we want to do what he says. He says, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. What a prayer. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Can you turn right now where you are? That, Lord, I'm afraid things don't seem right. You know, the world seems like it's going in a way that we'll get in trouble. But when you are afraid, you want to turn your heart and put your trust in the Lord. To say, what God has said is what will happen. What God has said is what will stand. You know, many people are asking, you know, is it the end time? You know, is it a Magedon? It's all kinds of things that people are asking. You know, the best answer is go to God's word. It will point the way. His scripture has talked about the last days, that these things will happen. He's talked about the character and the nature of the last days. So we shouldn't even be surprised as believers. But the same Jesus who talked about these things happening, he says, no, we should take heart because he has overcome the world. Glory to God. God has a plan, a solution for us Christians and his people. When I'm afraid... I put my trust in you. I pray that's what you will do. You will fear not because remember, surrounding you is a great army from heaven. And also the Bible does say that God lives in us and greater is he that is in us than him that is in the world. I read another quote I found and I, I couldn't get the author. It says, when fear knocks on your door, Send faith to answer. <laughs> you see, fear will come knocking and tell you about the undesirable danger that is awaiting to happen. Send faith to go and say, no, the Lord says this. Because faith 
will say what God says. Faith will stand on what God says. Faith will declare what God says. That's what you want to do. So when the enemy is speaking doom, you speak life. You speak what God has said about us and about you as a believer. You know, I have a good feeling about you that God is going to lift your countenance. I have a good feeling that God will make a way where there seems to be no way for you. I have a good feeling that God will open doors that you think are impossible. He is going to work in your life and you will be a testimony. You will tell of his glory, tell of his wonders because God is with you. Those that are with you are more than those that are against you. Hallelujah. I like to pray for you, and our prayer will be simple. We're going to pray like the psalmist. Lord, I'm afraid there's all these things coming against me, but I choose today to put my trust in you. If you're not yet a Christian, this is a good opportunity to put your trust in God. God is going to reach out and save you, cleanse you from your sins, and deliver you. And he's going to put his spirit in you. Where though you walk through in the shadow of the valley of death, you will fear no evil because you know God is with you. His spirit is with you. His presence is with you. I want us to pray. Just join me as we pray. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to forgive my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I receive Jesus as my Lord and as my Savior. I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. And I believe that you offer me eternal life. I put my faith in you. Save me. Heal my life. Make me a new creation today. In Jesus' name. And if you are a Christian, let me pray for you. Father, I pray for every believer who's listened to me as I have shared your word. The command is simple, Lord. You said, do not fear. And this is not just words spoken for no reason, because there is a big reason. The big reason is the heavenly host is around and surrounds those that fear you. The big reason is that you are with us and that promise stands. You said I will never leave you nor forsake you. Open our eyes that we recognize that you are with us. You're not just standing, but you are there fighting for us. And victory is coming to every Christian who has believed and has followed you and is obeying you right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. So God bless you, my friends. So do not fear, for the Lord is with you.